Hello and welcome to the Deep Track Podcast, an exploration of watches, trends, and culture with a few adventures along the way. I'm your host, Blake Bettner. This week, I'm happy to welcome Andrea Furlan to the podcast. Andrea is the co-founder of a young brand called Furlan Mari. This is a brand that launched right around the pandemic on Kickstarter and have come a long way since. I was really impressed with this brand right from the get-go due to the maturity expressed in their designs and how they presented themselves as a brand. That admiration has only continued to grow uh, in the intervening years. I really love what they've been up to. Uh, They most recently released a watch called the Disco Volante. Uh, They had a watch sell in the only watch auction, uh, which was a secular perpetual calendar uh, for over $130,000. Really incredible stuff and really clear, unique ideas uh, being executed here with these watches. Uh, Andrea has a really interesting background that has informed a lot of these decisions, um, you know, both aesthetically and how the brand is presented uh, in the market and uh, we discuss a lot of that here on the podcast and how he got his start uh, what it's been like uh, coming through these first few years uh, with the brand and most importantly where they're going from here Uh, we also talk a little bit about the landscape of small independent watchmakers and where uh, Furlan Mari fits into that as well Overall, a really fun discussion, and Andrea continues to show why Furlan Mari is a brand that you should be aware of and definitely excited about. I know I certainly am. Uh, Thank you to Andrea for making the time to come on to this week's podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoy this discussion. With that out of the way, here is this week's podcast with Andrea Furlan of Furlan Mari. Andrea Furlan, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Blake. It's a pleasure. So you are joining us from uh, Switzerland, which is where yeah, uh, Geneva, you're yeah. in, from Geneva, uh, yeah. from where uh, um, your brand of Furlan Mari is is based. Of course, you are a co-founder uh, of this brand. This is one of the more exciting brands uh, that I've come across in recent years. Uh, and, and we'll get into the why of that. Um, but before we do, for anybody who's not familiar with you or you Furlan Mari, the brand, uh, maybe give yourself a brief intro and what you're up to these days. Yeah, sure. So um it's been um, about three years we, we just um, launched the brand. It was through um, a Kickstarter campaign. So it was in 2021, uh, right uh, during COVID, uh, COVID um, crisis. So it was quite difficult for me because we were uh, only two in the team with Ahmad, uh, my co-founder in the Middle East, stuck in the Middle East and me stuck in Geneva. My parents... Uh, home, <laughs> you know, I was in my bedroom and then <laughs> we started the Kickstarter like this. So it was uh, nice to, it's a nice adventure because a uh, friend adventure, like human adventure and also, uh, um, yeah, because my background is more like a design, industrial design. So I'm passionate about watches since I have, um, since, since I have uh, 15 years old and always trying to to sketch uh, watches, shaped, etc. Um, I was uh, super passionate about cars. I wanted to be a car designer um, from the beginning, but um, then I discovered uh, the watch uh, universe. It was uh, amazing to to discover this um, this uh, big world and and with little object like this and try to sketch them the details the from from scratch. And uh, then I, I directly uh, wanted to to make some uh, internship in the watch industry. So I um, started um, the, when I was 15 years old, I made about 10 uh, internships uh, in the watch industry in, in Switzerland. So it was uh, with Hublot at the beginning in the old um, company, the first company of Hublot in Lyon, Switzerland. And then um, HD3 complication, it was with uh, um, a designer called uh, Jörg Isek, um, which is a um, great uh, designer, he did uh, the Breguet Marine, etc. <clears throat> and the two, two, two from uh, Vacheron Constantin as well. And they teach me how to, to sketch uh, by hand um, some techniques. And then I did uh, with Chopard as well. Chopard, uh, I did um, a few days um, internship, but it was incredible to, to discover this, uh, this world. And I remember they, the, the designer, we, we were... Um, eight in the in the team and it was a um, super um, nice team very um, very um, 
very um, helpful and they open the doors more than uh, closed doors. That's what I like with this um, industry. Um, a lot of people open doors from uh, for the young um, generation. And um, even if I was not professional, etc. at that time, um, we were surrounded by incredible people with great talents who teach me how to to gave me a lot of um, advice and good advice for the for the future so then I, I directly wanted to go to this kind of path and um, started to 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 do um, industrial design uh, um, studies in Geneva uh, in Lausanne called the uh, ECAL school ECAL school it was more really like industrial background industrial design we only sketch and design products. Um, it, it could be a ski, snowboard, lamps, table, etc. And we were, um, <clears throat> um, it was interesting because we didn't focus on only industrial design uh, skills, but also graphic design, typography, um, design, how to photograph uh, an object, how to, to make it in 2D, in 3D, and make the 3D renderings as well. So it was a really complete background in terms of um, creativity, creation. And it gives me also a lot of um, um, good skills to for, for the future, to, to help me to for, for the brand. Because um, at that time, we, we, we didn't have any uh, investment for the Kickstarter. We started with a zero, with a mat, so uh, with zero budget, what we can do, um, <clears throat> that's why uh, the, the school um, gave me a lot of um, good um, background because it, it helped a lot in terms of uh, graphic for the, the watches for to understand how to, to sketch in, in 2D, 3D, to do a, a teaser uh, on, on the social media. So um, yeah, I did um, 3D renderings for the, for the first uh, picture of the, of the watch. And uh, this was the first, uh, the, a little bit of the background. And, Apart the, before the, the industrial design school, I did um, a general uh, um, background um, in, in Geneva um, in uh, with German uh, German language school and also um, um, yeah general uh, like science etc biology and science basic school and also I did a lot of um, athletics um, and uh, piano classical piano and uh, a lot of athletic sport, uh, 800 meter was my uh, my specialty. Oh, nice, nice. Wow. Well, it's a, uh, it's a very diverse background that you're coming at this from. And I can see the aesthetic considerations really take root in a deep way. Uh, we've got a few mutual friends that had kind of put this brand on my radar prior to, to your releasing. And I was fortunate enough to go hands-on with some of the early watches before release. And... Uh, and I came away with a really strong impression of, you know, th there's something different about this watch. Uh, and and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. Before we do, though, what are you wearing on your wrist today, Andrea? <clears throat> Wear the, the, the Disco Volante, the green one, because um, I think it's quite different uh, color of what we are used to see yeah. in the brand. So <laughs> it's a little bit, it's super cool to, to wear that daily. Yeah. It's a nice presence on, on the wrist. And there is a lot of to see uh, in the dial, so you can see the yeah the curved hands, the the luminosity in the night. It's nice, even the the movement is uh, hand beveled, so um, quite nice to to have something different without any lugs. So it's yeah. um, it was a nice project as well to to follow and and to do. Yeah, this is this is of course your your latest release, the Disco Volante collection. Uh, there, there's three different colorways uh, or colors of this watch, I should say. This this watch is a perfect example of why I find your brand so compelling because there's a lot of like clearly really well thought out details here when you look uh, not just kind of visually at how the design comes together but structurally and how the case comes together. Mm -hmm. You know the 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 case itself is a very unique shape, um, which uh, you know. 
doesn't have a, an obvious lug from 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 the top yeah. it's that's kind of tucked in neatly at the bottom but it's still a very thin case uh and and, and relatively small case overall but there's a lot of really big details happening with from the layers on the dial and how they all come together mm-hmm. and and this is something that I've, I've seen kind of in your watches and enjoyed in your watches um you know you know since uh since since you founded the brand and you know clearly it's very intentional there's a lot of intention that goes into mm-hmm. these designs um how what's the process like of bringing these ideas if you have a very detailed design bringing it to life structurally and in in a commercially viable way you know mm-hmm. is, is there a lot of prototyping that happens or is there a lot of you know well we're gonna have to find a different solution for these lugs because they didn't work the way that we thought we were going to you know like what is that process like given the detail the level of detail that goes into some of these designs they're very intricate yeah we we are with Hamad we're really focused on on details and um, tell something uh, different um, like we we don't want to just create a product because we like it or it's it's beautiful like this or we want to do this or that project we always want to find something a little bit more like this extra touch uh, it can be an historical details it can be um, 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 a story to to tell behind that move uh, this or that movement for example the make a quartz collection uh, was inspired by the work of uh, François Borgel, a case maker, which is um, which, who was um, the case maker of a uh, lot of uh, big, big brands, Movado, Patek Philippe, and others. And you can see a lot of, of his details in, through the, the different brands, for example, the engraved pusher or, or decagonal case bags with some um, uh, 10, um, 10, 10 uh, corner uh, case back. Uh, screwed, and um, these kind of details really um, appeal to 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 us. And uh, when we begin a project, we have a lot of projects since the beginning of the Kickstarter. We have like almost twenty ideas with with Ahmad to to do. But uh, sometimes we said, okay, this is not for now. This we we, we don't found this or that uh, details or uh, story behind uh, what we want to tell behind this or that project. For example, the disco came also because um, uh, it, it was an, a, a shape that we didn't see a lot uh, since the 80s. So it appears um, around the 30s. I have a little one from the 30s, like really, really small disco volante. And um, <clears throat> it, it has disappeared um, around the 80s. And uh, we didn't find uh, a lot of projects like this in, in, in the market. So we said, um, yeah, why not to do this project? But we did. We we stopped a little bit because we said we we what what movement we want to use inside. We didn't find the right um, approach. So after that, we we just um, I read about um, um, a movement that was really really thin called the puzzle movement, and the puzzle seven thousand one uh, was um in fact it was a super important movement. Um, by the past, uh, because the puzzle factory was um, important um, in the in the the watch um, industry uh, in Switzerland, then became um, ETA Group. It was uh, merged with the different companies, and it was nice to tell that story as well. And it fits perfectly the watch because Disco Volante, we love the 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 thin case uh, profile of the watch. We didn't want a I don't know, a 12 millimeter case. So we wanted to find the movement that could go inside. We we bought a batch of um, of 7001 from ETA and we totally redesigned the, the movement. We redesigned the bridge. Um, we did, um, we have a friend who, who, is, who is in charge now of the brand, of the technical part of the brand, which uh, is also the, the perpetual calendar. Um, because we will we will release the perpetual calendar for the public, and uh, he's in charge of this kind of technical stuff in the brand, um, and he also said to us, okay, let's do a test, give us the movements, and uh, let's do like hand finish on the movement, hand beveling, really like high hand um, details that you can find on on more high end watches, and we wanted to also ha- have uh, that accessibility in the brand, so. 
it was important to us to give um, an accessible price point compared to what we put inside. Um, and um, he came with that beautiful movement, hand beveled. He, he did that alone in Geneva with uh, his daughter. And uh, he did uh, 1,400 uh, movements like this. Wow. So it's, uh, it's interesting to, 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 to continue that kind of... We need to, to, to tell this kind of details to the, to the public as well, because uh, we, we, those kind of movements were not made uh, with uh, hundreds of uh, watchmakers or in, uh, in, comp in different manufacturers. It was made by uh, yeah, the idea of one guy <clears throat> in Geneva, but we did all the design, we sketched the, the, the bridge because we didn't like uh, the, the, the initial bridge, bridges. So we, we did something more round, more um, subtle. And um, there is even polished angles around the chamfer, around the, um, for, for, um, um, sorry, around the, the ruby, the jewels. There is a, um, um, we call it goot in French, but it's a, a little polished angle. And um, yeah, it was super interesting to, to, we were surprised to have this kind of thin case uh, with that amount of, uh, of uh, detail we put because the dial is made with um, four parts. So it's quite complex. Yeah. And um, the case as well, the lugs are attached separately to the, to the case. So to, to control um, the, the, the corner all around the, the case. Yeah, it, it it's it's a special movement, and uh, you know that that kind of befits the design of the uh, of, of the the rest of the watch, which is really refreshing to see. Uh, this, of course, isn't your first mechanical movement. This is is uh, kind of a part of a broader collection that you have now, um, and uh, and that I presume you know more things will kind of be fitted into uh, before we get into the mechanics though i want to just touch on uh, just a few more things on on the design process because you mentioned something there in, in talking about the historical relevancy and historic stories that these mm -hmm. things tell and you know i think we're, we're we're kind of in an era where a lot of brands are looking to the past and to, to revive older designs or looking to the past to be inspired by some older designs and you know i see this work to varying degrees some brands do it really well and you know, some mm -hmm. brands you'd rather see kind of maybe push forward uh, in, into more modern designs. You seem to have struck a really nice balance here where, where there's clearly familiar elements to the design, but it doesn't look like you could place it as it's trying to look like this or it's trying to look like that. Yeah. It still kind of looks like a distinct, you know, for Elon, for Elon Mari, I guess, design DNA that you've developed here over the past few years. But clearly you're reaching in and finding inspiration from very important watches in the past. Yeah, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm curious how you want this balance to be in the brand if this is very intentional on your part of, you know, these still have to look like their own things, but they're still pulling in elements, design elements from, you know, these famous watches. Uh, yeah, how, how do you think about that in terms of kind of building ahead and, and, and you know, kind of building... Um, you know, but modern designs that are kind of still uh, a foundation for you to build your brand on while still kind of preserving a lot of the historic details and inspiration sources that, uh, that, that you found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's um, first with Ahmad, we love vintage uh, shaped because um, even with, I, I prefer, for example, vintage cars than uh, modern cars the, because the, the shapes of, of the past were, super interesting it was a lot of work in terms of uh, yeah the, it was more interesting for me so we we we, we dive into this uh, kind of, of world of vintage um, details corn de vache lugs for example uh, um our history as, as uh, were were super important in the past rolex did that uh, a lot of brands did um, did um, shaped case and um, shaped lugs as well and Universal Genève and other, but um, we want when we start a project, we yeah, we just want to find the, the right um, or historical details or or um, a part of the story, and we just make a twist, a modern twist on it. For example, the Disco Volante, we we started with uh, the movement, and um, we liked the aesthetic of the disco, and we mixed that we mixed that together, but we 
we push a little bit <clears throat> this kind of modern twist by adding some luminova on the on the dial. Some uh, um, we we place like four part dials, uh, uh, curved uh, curved and luminova hands, which were not that there um, present the, um, by the past. And um, yes, we we. We try to find the, the, the balance and proportion between uh, between um, past details and, and um, with this kind of modern twist always. So, for example, we have now a few projects in in mind with with, with Ahmad, and uh, we 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 work on that. But we are not uh, uh, ready because we didn't twist. Um, we didn't find the right uh, twist. Um, so I think it's that for Anne-Marie is also to. To, to tell historical uh, or watch watch making horological orolog stories and by, by adding this um, modern twist um, you can see with the QP the perpetual calendar we did for only watch it was um, this was completely it didn't exist the uh, secular perpetual calendar we developed it patent it and um, and um, put it on a, on a Classical vintage um, shape, but it's our um, development and and our our vision of, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll talk about that in a minute because it's a it's a watch that that really excites me. Um, but, but just quick to go back to 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 the design, I feel like the color is another big uh, uh, element of mm -hmm. this, and and the color combinations that you work with are uh, are, are have become very consistent uh, with you here. You know, I think the Savannah Havana salmon was kind of a, a take on, of, of course, a salmon dial that, that we've all seen. Uh, and you know, as as we speak, we've you've got a picture of I think your first mechanical watch uh, that, that you developed, uh, and it's it's a unique salmon color. It's kind of peachy, um, but the it's hands, so like the hands and the hour markers, though, are done in black. Which is a which is a great look. Uh, the, there's a lot of like really fine details that go into these, and they kind of like live harmoniously with the colors. Um, you know, I'm curious to how many iterations these designs go through. Yeah. Do you do you have yeah, like we, a whole we, litany of we, colors that you're looking at, and you kind of narrow it into three, or, or how does that color process work well, for you guys? For the Mecha Quartz, for example, we did um, I think um, ten page of uh, iteration and. Finding the right color, the right balance. Then we we select around ten colors for each uh, collection. We make some um, um, prototype. So first we we receive the dials, and if they have the the right details, the right colors, then we we select on the Pantone uh, uh, Pantone um, um, papers. You know the Pantone color. We select some color. We try on uh, every day. I work on Illustrator and. In design, Photoshop, and other uh, um, software to test, um, and uh, then we put that on a, for example, in 3D in, uh, with the 3D rendering, we put the watch on a um, with an environment around. For example, we put um, not fake light, but it's like um, a virtual uh, environment with lights, mm -hmm. uh, with sunlight or day, etc., and we turn the environment around the the 3D to see if. if how it performs uh, visually, um, and when we turn the piece, when we we experiment some some um, position in 3D, we can clearly um, say, okay, this kind of detail will, will work. This we need to work again on it and make another prototype, etc. So we dig into the the product uh, instead of just receiving and make some picture. Now we we are um, we are pretty fast. On, on the, we, we make like two batch of prototypes only every time. No need uh, three, four, five batch. Sometimes uh, we make three, but it's um, when we don't, we are not sure about the colors. But we are pretty. We, we make a lot of work in in advance um, before making the the product in, in the metal. So uh, yeah, it, it, every day we, we we work with the the software. Um, but mostly 3D renderings and, uh, and the Illustrator to, to find um, the perfect uh, colors. And, and also for the new, we will do a new Mecha Quartz collection. And with, for the new um, collection, we are trying to not have like a black dial or a white dial, but something more, yeah, more, again, something 
not seeing a, li a little bit, so um, we will test and uh, and see. But yeah. uh, more and more, we try to to make some combination of uh, of um, color that will um, will um, will perform uh, well for us. For example, the cream and green or uh, the Havana salmon, which is a signature now, um, perform really well on, on the light. And this one, the, the salmon one, it's a stamped dial, not uh, just uh, um, painted, but it's stamped and then on, on the metal and then uh, colored. And it performs really well with, with the light. So yeah, we, we, we do a lot of um, experiments as well. Now we do experiment with stone stone dial since uh, few since months since few months now we do some experiment with stones and um, different kind of uh, texture as well and material well it's exciting to hear uh yeah they, they certainly come out um uh they, they have very special quality to them they just kind of feel very unique uh yeah I, I'm, I'm curious you're part of a very a, a burgeoning scene of kind of small independent brands uh now do you are there any other brands that you pay attention to kind of adjacent to you that you feel like are doing really exciting things that you're inspired by uh, yeah there is a lot like um, um in, what i like is uh, to to go to the um, when we when we are in the wind up um, wind up patch fair it's super interesting to 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 work into different brands uh, italian brands french uh, and and and, and other to see and to, to, to see what, what, what they came up years by years. But for example, with the more independent watch industry, I like uh, what, uh, what is uh, uh, Max do with um, MBNF and the Betune as well. Um, and other parts, we, we are always uh, surrounding with uh, Baltic and uh, um, other um, uh, brands um, Around us, like every every day, so it's it's uh, challenging and it's also exciting to see um, what uh, those brands will will do in the future. Uh, yeah. What is their strategy and what they will? What it's 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 super nice, interesting to see to have been in the beginning and to see where they will go as well. Us as well, for sure. We we are excited and also curious about what we can do also in the future. We. Like uh, three years ago, we didn't know that we will come up with a secular perpetual calendar uh, just next to a Mecha Quartz uh, watch. Um, yeah. But we have now three clear lines and people um, just come to the brand and they, they know where to go clearly. Um, they're, they're, they have a, if they have a budget, they will know um, which collection they, will, they, they, could, um, they could see. Yeah. And we have no compromise between the, the lines. So same quality inside the case, outside the case for a Mecha Quartz than, uh, than um, a perpetual calendar. Uh, it's the same uh, process, no compromise on something. How important is it for you to make watches that are more accessible? And, you know, do, do you plan on taking the brand you know, higher up, you know, gradually, or do you always want to have a part of the brand that is accessible no, to a broad part of yeah. the community? Yeah. We always want to keep the same because uh, I said from the beginning, uh, we had in mind to do a mechanical line, technical as well, and uh, make a parts line. It, this was from the beginning, but it, it takes time to for, for the people to, to, to know this. And three years, I think it's, it's very short to have been... You know, it, it's, it's really clear in, uh, in almost three years now. So we will also work, and we are working now uh, since a year now, we are working on um, um, accessible, more accessible watches, for sure, because our community is asking for that. So we, we also want to, to innovate a little bit. So we, we have this kind of technical line, uh, which we, we create like an um, accessible complication. Uh, we have a dead beat seconds uh, patent um, already patented, and uh, we have also a um, perpetual calendar and other complications that we are working on it. But in, in the other hand, we also want to push more the Mecha Quartz collection and the accessible mechanical collection, as well as the Swiss movement mechanical collection. So um, we are not close to 
to do, um, I don't know, other um, more accessible watches, even more than the Mecha Quartz for sure. Because, because again, the community is asking if our community and customer would only go for more high-end watches, we will follow as well. But <clears throat> we need to know that, um, that there is so much to do in the also the more accessible price point, 500, less than 1,000 Swiss francs. There is a lot to do. And uh, we, we want to, to, yeah, to, to show what we have um, in mind because uh, we have some projects in, in, in mind since the beginning and we just uh, want to find the time now to, to, to make them. And now that we have a team here in Geneva, uh, now we are eight people uh, full and uh, with uh, four external, so um, uh, around 10 or 12 um, in total. And uh, two years ago, we were only two. So again, this is also a process to, 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 to put in place. Yeah, it seems you, it's clear that there's a lot of ideas that you guys have to, to, to bring to life. I feel like the last few times I've run into you wherever in the world, you always kind of bring up your phone and show me something that you're working on. And it's <laughs> and it's it's got me really excited because, um, you know, not only are you kind of introducing some of these technical uh, complications, um, the way that you're executing them feels very different and wholly unique. Uh, it's not just oh, here's a cool calendar complication or, or you know, a deadbeat seconds. Like there's always something unique about them that make them feel very distinct. And that's one of the things that has me very excited about the brand. And of course, this all started with, and it's a watch that you've, you've alluded to a couple times now, uh, the watch that you did for Only Watch, which is a secular calendar, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a very unique design. It's, it's it, uh, The dial opens up to reveal uh, some of the workings of the complication underneath. We're it, like... What was the process de of developing this watch like? And yeah. how surprised, like, I know it was kind of like a weird time that you developed it and then the only watch went through some, some, its own kind of weird mm -hmm. things, but it eventually happened and it yeah. sold uh, for uh, a rather large sum uh, deep into the six pieces. Were you surprised by how much this watch sold for as well? Yeah. And uh, for example, with that watch, with, which was interesting, is that we, the starting point was the, the ID, the, the, the module, the, the technology. And the technology guided us to make that design, for example, because it was a very um, simple, so ultra simple perpetual calendar. And um, you have the months, you have the 12 months uh, around the outside the, 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 the dial. And then you have on the right and the left, you have two counters and those counters um, will, will um, you will have the, the date indication and, the, and the, um, the indication on those two counter and there is not uh, four counters like um, most perpetual calendar or three counters but we made it super simple and in fact for the first prototype was um, a closed dial with, with uh, the, the counter was were closed and it was too simple because uh, the technology was uh, almost too simple that we, we made it look like a chronograph. And we say to the, to the watchmaker, okay, we need to complexify, we need to make it complex. Um, so we open the, the counter. Because without that, it was, a, it was looking like a chronograph. So um, this is why the, the technology and the, the movement guided us through the design and not the, 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 the opposite. And it was an interesting um, challenge to to make as well, and we were super. Yeah, we were surprised to see that uh, it it went for one hundred thirty thousand um, dollars. Um, yeah, it was uh, also it was a nine months uh, development. Um, um, yeah, nine months of development. So really fast, I think, for that amount of um, of of complexity. And with the patent as well, so nine months in, in total. Um, no, it was a, a cool project to do. Uh, again, it was with uh, friends, and uh, not like just uh, say to ourselves, "Okay, we need to do a complication. Let's find a watchmaker that can do it." No, it was it was super natural because I worked uh, four years with Dominic Renault from Renault and Papi, and Julien Tixier, the watchmaker, is a friend. Um, so we just um, 
came together and sit together and say, okay, we want to, to do something together as a, it was an opportunity and a French adventure. And we made it like, like this. It was not um, um, a mission, but more, um, yeah, we, it was natural. Since the beginning of the brand, I think it's a natural um, adventure with human and the friends. Was it a part of the plan from the get-go for it to be a secular calendar? Or was that something that was kind of worked in later on in the process, like when you realized you could or something like that? And, if, and yeah. you know, if, if you're listening, you're not sure what a secular calendar is. They've, they've existed before. It's not something you see a whole lot of, uh, but it also accounts for the, the, the error and the leap years over longer periods of time um, as, you know, uh, the Gregorian calendar is far from perfect, so we go through these correction cycles every you know, mm -hmm. couple hundred years, few hundred years to, to even account for the errors in the leap year system. So this even accounts for that. Uh, so it will remain kind of you know true to accuracy for, for, for that much longer. So was that was that always a part of the plan? Yeah. Um, first, um, the mini chrono came with the idea of a perpetual calendar. So it was. Um, to simplify the, the perpetual calendar system from like hundreds of components around to, to 20 components. And then one day they discussed with Julien Tixier and came up uh, with me and said, um, Andrea, we have a little uh, surprise or proposition. And it was already, um, I think it was six months after the, um, the, the first development, the first ID, first order. And they said, okay, we. We want to invent, uh, we, we just came up with the idea to make a secular perpetual calendar. So it's more complex. It's the most complex of the perpetual calendar. And I, and I said, okay, but we have only a few months to, to make it. And they said, yeah, yeah, it will be okay. And I said, are you sure, guys? Because uh, we, we are super in rush and I, I don't like to be in, in rush, really. But we, we, we didn't have the, the design of the case, the, the dial, etc. It was like this. But... They came one day with that ID. And uh, in fact, the secular um, module has only five parts. And um, it's, it's on top of the perpetual calendar system. Everything is modular, so everything can be moved, removed as well. So we can remove the secular um, module, and we can do a perpetual calendar, and we can remove the perpetual part and the secular part to do an annual calendar in the same ID, same um, module system. So this is uh, interesting because uh, with the same um, assembling kit or components, when, when you produce your components, you can say to yourself, okay, let's, um, I want to assemble 10 perpetual, 20 secular, and uh, I don't know, 10 uh, annual calendar. It's really efficient and then smart in the way of uh, producing it and controlling the cost as well. And the secular part will calculate the the secular, the, 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 the hundred years anomaly. So um, it was only, yeah, I think there is five people who did that in the story of the watchmaking, like Anderson Genève, Frank Muller, Patek Philippe, Caliber 89, and uh, most recently, um, I think it was IWC or, yeah. Or yeah, just this, just this year, uh, IWC uh, released. Yeah. This was their big release, and of course, it's uh, quite yes, a quite large, very calendar. expensive. <laughs> I was going to ask yeah. your thoughts on 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 that watch. Oh, I love the the, the 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 work they did with the dial and the, the, the multiple uh, layer of the dial. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's different. Yeah, sure. So it's a different because they have the the, the you can see the years um, on the, on the dial. And us, it's most, uh, it's more um, simple. Like really, like we, we have twenty five components, so it's uh, quite simple. And we per that, we put that on um, La Jupere movement because uh, we can control then the the cost as well. Because we, when we order a volume of um, with with the companies, uh, we can say, okay, this year we want to assemble hundred uh, perpetual calendar. Um, and we can control the, uh, our volume um, because it's difficult for a young company as well to to order uh, thousands and thousands of movements and to to know the um, what demand we we will have in this year or in the next year. So we have to be smart also in the way of how to to produce the 
and to, to, to control that, to, to produce technically the, the complication. It, it's very nice to invent and to do complication, but if it, it can be um, difficult and um, for in, the, in, in, a, in a production perspective. We have to be smart in that um, yeah. thinking process. Will we see a commercially available production version of an annual calendar, a perpetual calendar, and a secular calendar uh, from Fermat? Yes. Okay. Yes, and this year we just this put the, the yeah, we put the the calendar the on the GPHG this year. And um, it will be a commercial piece of the uh, of the perpetual calendar. So it's not handmade um, like the, the the case is not totally handmade like um, like the only watch because uh, it's impossible. But it's a um, um, CNC machine. It's in steel, and uh, there is again uh, there is hand finish, hand polished, and hand beveled um, parts. And the rotor is in full rose gold, so it's uh, interesting to have at that price point that amount of uh, I don't know from some some nice finish for that price point. Yeah, I'm yeah. really excited to see these come to life. Um, it's a, how I mean I know that you were in the only watch. Uh, well, so was Baltic. Uh, this was kind of like a, a big moment. I feel like for brands of this stature to be taken this seriously. Do you feel like mm -hmm. this gave you a lot of kind of um, exposure to a different crowd than you had had prior or previously or like what did it mean for you to be yeah. a part of this only watch only um i really liked only watch because it was um his or was we don't know but <clears throat> it was the, the 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 one of the well, one of the only moment um or auction that uh, that we, we could see a lot of creativity from from the brands like uh, even some brands they did a, um, a whole new development just for that um, moment we didn't see that with other um, moments in, in the in the watch watch um, much making planning over the year I think only watch as a, as that kind of power and um, it was nice to see that I was dreaming to to do this uh, when we started the, the Kickstarter as well, so it was um, it was a, a, a huge moment for us because we we push ourselves and I think people were surprised to to for, for with what we we came um, they were not um, I think that yeah because we had mecha quartz and mechanical movement at that time and we came up with this secular perpetual calendar. And I think it was interesting for also to see that what 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 we were capable of, and also now the it's even more complex to um, to to make the, the the production piece because there is a whole new process to to do. Um, you need to to simplify some components to yeah to to merge some elements and to. To find the right team as well. It's not the the same team that will do a make a quartz or mechanical um, in the in the assembling stage and controlling stage than um, a piece like that. There is much more control and and um, and the skills involved. Yeah. Well, I that think what really what what impressed me about it was just how mature it felt from top to bottom. You know, given you know just how young the brand is, uh, but you know not only. The design language felt really mature, like the approach to the complications felt really mature, like it kind of cemented that this is a brand that people should be paying attention to uh, in my book if, if they hadn't been already. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see commercial versions of that. You've also mentioned, um, uh, you know, so, some other technical projects uh, that you have in the works, too. I know I've seen some some prototypes of the uh, the deadbeat seconds that, that you referenced earlier. And it's not just a traditional take on a deadbeat seconds either. There's something special about that. How many of these kinds of projects do you are you working on, kind of concurrently uh, there? Yeah. So um, uh, for technical um, line, we are working on three different complication um, at that time. A very accessible complication, and um, I would say middle accessible, like half the price of the perpetual calendar as well for the deadbeat seconds. And it will be um, 
I say dead beat sequence because it's a whole new complication that it's a, it's a mix of dead beat and other complications. So we have we don't have the 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 final um, words on or yeah on, on that because it's a mix of different things, um, and we will try uh, those up, up, upcoming weeks to to find the right uh, term. But uh, it's it's interesting because it's something that also there is a story behind. Um, a part of the complication uh, was invented by the, um, the grandfather ancestor of uh, Julien Tixier, um, which was the inventor of, um, you, you will see, but the details of this, this complication came from the, the mind of um, Julien. And on the other hand, it merged with the, the, the idea of Dominique Chrono. And then um, just one day he came with me with a, a Lego system. He just invented the complication on with Lego, uh, he put a motor on on Lego, and trying to to, to show me how the complication will work on on Lego. Wow. So uh, <laughs> he just made that, and then say, okay, this is the complication, and uh, we patent uh, we patent it as well. Yeah. So it's um it will be interesting to see that, and you will see that next year. Yeah, we are working on that. Okay. Yeah. Well. I'm very excited about that as well. Um, this is all really cool stuff as, as, as far as I've seen it. So I'm excited to see how they come to fruition. Um, you mentioned, uh, just to kind of go back uh, to the beginning, just a little bit, you mentioned that you'd been into watches for, for a very mm -hmm. long time since you were a young, um, uh, a young man. Uh, it, how does that take shape? Like, I know it influences probably how you think about what you do now with the watches that you create. Um, but do you have a relationship with watches outside of your own brand? And do you think about collecting watches? Are you part of the enthusiast community? Like, what is your place kind of in this world outside of, well, yeah, I make and design these watches, but I really love these kinds of things. And I collect these things, <laughs> you know, like, tell me about your involvement kind of in this space beyond uh, for Lamari. So when I was 15 years old, I, I started to also invent, like, um, I think, uh, it's not possible to do that complication, but I, I invented very futuristic um, um, watches uh, in the design, uh, um, design speaking. Um, I started to design a shaped case, uh, very futuristic because I loved also cars, as I said um, in the beginning. So I started to, to design, you know, the con concept cars uh, design really futuristic. So I tried to merge that with watch. Uh, before, but I also loved vintage shapes. So when I was young, I started to experiment a lot. I have uh, tons of books of, of ideas and different shapes and from uh, modern to vintage to futuristic. So it was like this kind of really like a lot of different uh, things going on in the head. And um, um, yeah, I forgot the question. Uh, like, do you said. still have a, like, do you still, um, you know, collect watches that are that I are not for love, yeah. you know and, yeah. uh, and get into that yeah i really collect um i have a, a friend um we were at school together his name is joel laplace uh, in instagram he's called uh, jojo la montre and he's a um, collector of, of watches he, he loves to find really special shaped um shape case etc and uh, with him i started to give me the the virus uh, of the vintage uh, um, watches, but something more, not classical, but something really different. Like I try to, to find shape that I cannot find everywhere. Like I have a, um, Paul Bure uh, watches, or I would say a, a mesh, different mesh strap or, um, uh, yeah, shaped case as well, really weird case. So I start to collect that kind of, of, um, of watches, but also I have more modern, uh, watches like from the 40s or the 50s uh, mostly cr chronograph and also um a sport watch like a uh, rolex pepsi from the 90s or omega speedmaster and um, but i really like to it's it's not not a specific date or specific shape but when, when something appeals to me um or i find the story behind the product i i really like that because it creates a links with the the, the product and the and, uh, and and me so yeah. um i try also to 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 give that to our watches like um we want to create a link between uh, the product and the and the people it can be a product like a, a details from the past it can be 
interior uh, case back, which is a, we, we can add perlage finish in, inside the case. So there is something that beautifully made inside and outside as well. We try to create something and to, to tell stories for, um, so then the people can explain those stories as well in details. Um, and yeah, it creates, it creates um, something with the product, it can create a, a discussion between two person, it can create a, um, an, a feeling, a link, yeah, that kind of thing. So I try to, this kind of collection, what, what I have, um, help me also to give something to the, to, yeah, to our brand. Yeah. I love that. These are watches with the, they have character, right? Like that's what yeah. it is. It's, it's at the end of the day. Do you remember the first watch that you had when you were 15? Um, so it was a Swatch chronograph with some uh, caramel strap, like very, like I, I found that it was like a, remind me of the vintage chronograph. It was from Swatch. Um, and then um, I, my uh, grandfather gave me his um, Rolex um, um, uh, that they just, um, and he was the only uh, watch that he, he only wore that watch um, days and nights. He never took it off uh, unless uh, when I was uh, eating with him, he gave me the watch to sketch. So only that time I, I, I remember the, the, the moment I have with my grandfather is when he gave me the watch to sketch and then I need to give it back. And every time, like every week or two weeks, I start to sketch his watch. And then he gave me his watch and it creates this kind of link that I, uh, um, something like more powerful than everything else. Yeah. yeah. So I started to have this passion about watch. watch yeah. I love that. I, these are things that none of us really need these days. So it's like kind of connections yeah. and experiences yeah. like yeah. that yeah. that make them yeah. special. Yeah. yeah. Do you still, do you, are there any like modern brands? Like, do you pay attention to modern Rolex, Omega, you know, all these kind of things? Do, sure. do, do you get excited for watches and wonders to see what new watches uh, come out? Um, it's difficult to be excited about, it's been years now that I need to find, uh, uh, how I would say, I'm excited to see more independent watchmakers. I am more interested in, in that. Yeah. They, they're, there's a lot of creativity in the, in that um, world, for example, um, the MBNF or Peterman Beda or a um, lot of different um, little, yeah, little brands. It's more exciting for, for me to see that and what they are, what they prepare. Yeah. Um, there, there is also a um, Recep and, and other brands like this. But yeah. also I, I, I really like, I appreciate to, to follow Rolex and and, and Longines and, and Raymond Vell and what what Frédéric Constant or other for sure, but I'm more excited to with this more independent watchmaking. Yeah, absolutely. There's some really incredible stuff happening. You mentioned a, a, a few of them that I think a lot of people are really excited mm -hmm. about, and it and it, it it gives me a lot of hope that we have a very bright future in this space. <laughs> See, so you who are these are all very young uh, people that are coming in into the space and all really kind of. Uh, energetic have a lot of really great ideas you know from 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 yourself to simon brett and rochette Pacheppi and, uh, and peter minabade as you mentioned um mm -hmm. yeah there's just a wealth of ideas that they're bringing to life in such a beautiful way and and, and i and i count you among them certainly um so very excited to see what the future holds uh for 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 you as well uh andrea i can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on with me today it's just been a huge pleasure chatting with you thank you blake it was a, a real pleasure and uh, happy to to do that again in the future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will leave links to everything that we've talked about uh, down below, uh, as well as links to where you can go find more of Andrea and more for Lanmari watches. You have a direct-to-consumer business, if if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken, where people can go to your website and buy a watch right off the website. Yeah, it's uh, mostly online, but we have also a showroom in uh, in Geneva. Okay. People can go uh, just on the showroom. Now we have a. Uh, virtual appointments and physical appointments you can take on the website as well. And we will open a, a showroom in Tokyo this year normally. Um, yeah. And uh, we have now also a retail space in, in Australia, but also in London this year with Time Tide. Uh, it was our first uh, retailer. Yeah. And we try to open more and more to the retail. But uh, step by step, we, we are finding the right balance between uh, 
uh, showroom between uh, retail and between uh, online uh, online customers. But we are always there for for the people. If they have any question, we we are we are on the on social media. I I want I answer personally on the Instagram as well. So we are here for for everyone. Yeah, that's, that's that's right. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Andrew uh, McCutcheon. We had on the podcast just a few weeks back, and he he mentioned uh, you as well. Um, so yeah, if you're in London um, or Geneva or any of those places, definitely go go check them out. These are watches that you have to see in person to fully yes. appreciate uh, for sure. Especially these colors, uh, I love them. Uh, all right, well, thank you again to Andrea. Uh, again, we'll leave links to all this stuff down below. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it, and that will do it for this week's episode. Uh, until next time, take care.